I should have done this eons ago. I have a cube here. I've placed the cube at the same location where the light is, and I've also rendered the cube with a pass-through shader. That is, I'm just doing the colors as we've seen before. I'm not doing any lighting to this cube, because if the light was inside the cube, then the dot product between the light position and the surface normals would all be negative, and we get a nice black cube. I want this nice, colorful cube. Doing that actually wasn't that hard. I just went to my code. I made some more shaders. I have this fragment shader pass through, vertex shader pass through. Exact same thing we've done way early in this playlist where we just pass through the data onto the fragment shader. And then in the fragment shader, we just say, hey, the color is whatever the color is of that vertex. I believe that's old hat. And then in the GL window here, uh, when we say compile shader. We have our shaders that do our lighting, and then down here I said, well, let's read in the pass-through shaders. We'll make another program for the pass-through shaders. We'll call it pass-through program ID. And then the real trick is GLU's program. Uh, when I render that cube, I put the cube at the light position in the world. I scale that cube down so it's nice and tight. Remember, we're doing a point light, so I want a small cube to represent that as much as possible. And then I just use program. I say do the pass-through render the cube and then hey use the lighting programs the shaders that do the lighting for the plane and then we can light the plane accordingly switching programs using GLU's program is actually expensive you want to minimize that as much as possible in this case it's minimized as much as possible we swap programs render the cube swap programs render the plane but we wouldn't want to swap programs render the cube swap programs to the plane and then swap back to the same program to render something else Swap program once, render as much as possible with that program, and then swap program again and render as much as possible with that program. We'll talk about that more. Future videos, I digress. I like this scene because I have my light there, and if I can fly my camera up high, you can see that light bulb and the diffuse light just hitting that plane. The plane doesn't have any model to world transformation matrices, it's just centered in the world. But even if it did, we know our lighting equations would work because we've handled that. In previous videos but I like that that nice diffuse light spot right there we want to add specular light and if there was specular light coming off of this point light I'd see a reflection right here because light would leave the cube area hit the surface right there and then bounce up to your eye that's up to your eye somehow I'm trying to make that mouse come out of the screen and hit you in the face it would bounce up and hit your eye just like in this photo I showed you in the previous video uh, light exits here, enters, I'm guessing here, here's our nice reflected spot, comes up, hit your face. We want to do that. We want to do that using the math I showed you in the last video. Let's go over to the fragment shader code where we do our lighting. This is our diffuse light calculations. And then I'm going to put this down here. And we'll calculate specular light there. Then ambient just kind of comes for free as a uniform value. Okay, briefly reviewing the math from the last video. Here's our surface. Here's our light position. We have a light vector. This is the point on the surface. We want to shade that point as a surface normal. Okay, this is surface normal. Normalize surface normal normalized light vector. We already have those two from calculating the diffuse light, which is quite nice. In fact, the surface normal, we're doing this all in world coordinate space. Doesn't matter what coordinate space, as long as you're consistent. We've talked about that before. The surface normal is in world coordinate space. Let me use the, oops, let me use the proper color. The surface normal is in world coordinate space. We calculated that in the vertex shader before. We have the light vector in world coordinate space. So that would be this vector right there. We need the uh, reflected light vector. Okay, this will, I'm running out of colors here. Let's do green. We need the reflected light vector. Normalized reflected light vector. I showed you how to calculate that. We just reflect around the surface normal. So I'll say vec3 reflected uh, light vector in world coordinate space gets reflect the light vector 
in world coordinate space around the normal in world coordinate space. Oh, I'm so glad we took the time to rename all of our variables. Do that refactoring I did a few videos ago. Somebody disliked that video. I guess they like unmaintainable goad it. Kind of eats me up. We have our reflected light vector here. That's the green. Oh, well, that's the green. This green reflected light vector. We need our eye vector. And I guess I got blue, green. Should I use yellow? No, I'll use red. This will be our eye. We need our eye vector, our normalized eye vector. So we can do the dot product between the eye vector and the reflected light vector. The way we get the eye vector is we'll throw the eye or the camera position, the eye position, camera position, in. In world coordinate space, we'll subtract the position that we're trying to shade, normalize. It gives That gives us our eye vector. The exact same math we use to get the light vector. In fact, that math is hanging out right here. Let me erase all this off. Don't blink. Okay, I got rid of my underlying underlines. We need to get light position world. I'm going to say uniform, vec3, eye position in world coordinate space. I've just added a uniform, so we have to go to me GL window. And we'll search for light position world. Let's see, where did we get the uniform location for that? Right here. We actually don't need to do this inside of every single paint call. Every paint. I'm saying, what's the uniform location for this? variable. What's the uniform location? For the, I only need to ask it once, and I can do that after I've compiled the program. That could be an optimization we, we do. Uh, we send the light position down. I think right here we'll just say uh, GL int I position. Uh, I should say world on this, shouldn't I? Well, whatever. World uniform location. It's GL get uniform location uh, program ID now what did I call it I position world I need I position world actually getting all these uniforms like this is less ideal I'll show you how to uh, optimize that later we can send all of our uniform data down in one okay we have that uniform location GLM vec 3 uh, I position gets camera dot get Get, uh, do I have a get position? Does my camera? My camera doesn't have a get position. Okay, let's go to the camera code. All right, camera, give me your position. That'll be our eye position. And then GL uniform three float vector uh, eye position. There's one of them, and we'll take the address of I position sub zero, and that will send down our I position camera position. Sorry, I'm kind of using those together. It's actually I position uniform world uniform location. Okay, now that that's taken care of, we have the I position in world space, so we need to get this I vector. So vec three I vector world gets normalized. The exact same thing we did up here. But we're doing it for the I vector instead. I position in world space minus the vertex position in world space. Once we've normalized that, we have our I vector world. We have our reflected light vector world. Let's dot those two. Float. Specularity. Gets the dot product between this guy. I'll copy him and paste him. Copy him. And paste him. And I think we're good to go. And then down here we have our diffuse. We have our ambient. Uh, let's add our specularity. In fact, I'm going to put ambient on the left here because that's the order we've been doing everything in. We did ambient, and then we did diffuse, and now let's do specularity. In fact, right before that I'll say vec4 specular light. I want that as a vec4. In fact, I'll just call this S instead of specularity. And I can say S, S, S. It's a red, green, blue. I'll have the exact same amount of specularity. Uh, no alpha there, even though we're not using alpha. And I can say, okay, here's our ambient. Here's our diffuse. And then add the specular light. And we're good to go. I think we're done. Let's see how it looks. Control F5, build that. Run that and look at the end result. Hopefully we see some. Ah!
Compile errors. Oh, dummy, you probably totally saw me put that there. That's a minus. Control F5. Okay, I forgot. I, uh, I'm, I'm trying to write C++ like code where I just say, hey, give me a vec4 and construct it like this. But no, what you have to do is say, it gets vec4. Uh, that's just GLS all way of doing things. Control F5. And it's black. <laughs> Can you guess why it's black? Can you guess why it's black? Pause the video. Think about it. I forgot to negate the light vector. So where do I negate the light? Where did I do that reflect? Right here. I'm going to do negate the light vector in world. Run that. Ah, oh, big bright specular spot there. But then the rest of the scene seems to be pretty messed up. Any idea why? We forgot to do our clamp. We forgot to do our clamp. Because specular light, there is a... Good chance in many locations where the eye vector and the reflected vector are greater than 90 degrees, the dot product would be less than zero. It would be negative and take away the rest of the light. So I want to clamp the specular light between zero and one. If it's zero, just if it's negative, set it to zero. It doesn't contribute anything. If it's greater than one, then keep it one. And ah, that's starting to look a little bit better. Just a little bit better. We have, in fact, that's. That's an insane amount of specular light. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how to fix that. But uh, let me just show you, though, since you've endured with me this long. I have the light vector here. If I don't negate the light vector, if I don't negate it, it won't reflect out like this. Instead, what will happen is it re will reflect like that. And obviously, the dot product between that and the eye vector will give us negative and subtract, take away from our lighting. But there you go. We have specular. One last thing we have to do with specular, though is raise this to a power, depending on how shiny the surface is. Let me bring that picture back up. You see right here, it's 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 smooth, but it's not perfectly smooth. So my specularity is, is going to be kind of garbled there. Whereas here, it would be a nice tight point light in the mirror where it's perfectly lit. The way we control that is by raising this S value to an exponent. And we'll address that in the next video.